or thought you wide design codes for questions perhaps answered, we'll see. Um, as uh, we know, in a major extension to the drive to improve design standards of new housing developments across England, um, the, the recently published and now going through Parliament levelling up and regeneration bill includes a requirement that local authorities adopt authority-wide design codes as, a, as an integral part of their development plans. Now, assuming that this makes it into the Act, it raises, I think, several immediate questions for local planning authorities up and down the country. And so drawing on um, the monitoring and, and, and monitoring and evaluation uh, that we did of the National Model Design Code pilot programme, phase one of that pilot programme, uh, I'm going to suggest uh, a few answers to some of those key questions. First, what is an authority-wide design code? Well, up until now, the term design code uh, has been used uh, or most associated with the sorts of codes produced for uh, specific sites, typically in relation to a particular planning application, often produced by developers or their consultants rather than by local authority teams or their consultants. And in 2019, uh, design codes were defined in the national model, uh, sorry, the national design guide as a set of illustrated design requirements that provide specific detailed parameters for, for the physical development of a site or area. And that particular guidance of what a couple of years ago notes that the graphic and written components of the code should build upon a design vision such as a master plan or other design uh, and development framework for a site or area. Now the definition, that definition at that time, clearly envisaged that codes would relate to specific sites or closely defined uh, areas uh, such as a neighbourhood or with maybe a, a series of developable sites within it and also envisaged codes to be a delivery tool for a spatial design vision that had already been prepared. This contrasts with the simpler and broader description contained in the National Model uh, Design Code itself, published a couple of years later in, in 2021, which characterizes design codes as a set of simple, concise, illustrated design requirements that are visual and numerical wherever possible to provide specific detail parameters for the physical development of a site or area. And for the first time, the area in question was enlarged somewhat to include everything from a site, uh, a neighborhood, right up to a whole local authority, perhaps even a whole county, if that's uh, the local authority extends across a whole county. This fundamentally changes the nature of design codes because first they're being prepared for very large territories with very varied characteristics that might potentially encompass everything from you know, high density town center perhaps to low density suburbs or even into rural areas. And second, they will need to be prepared in the absence very often of a spatial design vision becoming in effect vision defining rather than vision delivery tools. To put this another way, rather than the content of master plans for sites subsequently informing and being delivered through a code, those master plans themselves will be shaped by these new authority wide codes. And this is something that the monitoring and evaluation explored as, a, as a, a good proportion of the codes were being that we evaluated were being created in the absence of a strong pre-existing vision for the area being coded, whether that was an individual site or a whole local authority. And this led to codes that were less detailed and more strategic in scope setting out only the critical design parameters related to factors such as form, density, greenness, connections, rather than every architectural or public realm aspiration and detail, factors that probably most of us would think are better dealt with at the site-specific scale anyway. 
the new local authority wide code might, I think, take a leaf out of the book of uh, the pilot program. And rather than attempting to be all encompassing from the start, they should be more strategic and think about what are the critical authority wide parameters, not every single detail. Indeed, the bill explicitly notes that authority wide coding does not mean to cover every aspect of design or the design implications of every possible type of development in every location. Moving to a second question, the proposed legislation offers little detail with regard to the nature of the new codes and only specifies that for every part of their area, the development plan includes requirements with respect to design that relates to development. So on the face of it, every authority already complies with this requirement, given that all have at least some basic policy or guidance in place on design, even if that's not been particularly effective in the past. However, upping the ante, authorities are expected to specify in their local plan timetable how they will comply with the new provision for an authority-wide uh, design code. And in fact, in, in a, a, a related clause, the Secretary of State reserves the right to intervene where a local authority fails to ensure design code. Um, so authorities will need to carefully consider what they uh, have and whether it cuts the mustard. Uh, they should also bear in mind that the clear expectation is for authorities to put in place a more effective regime of urban design governance uh, so the chances are whatever they have now probably won't cut the mustard. The National Model Design Code distinguishes between design guides, more generic and flexible, and design codes, more specific uh, and prescriptive. And we also need to distinguish between harmful codes in placemaking terms and those that will deliver higher order design outcomes, uh, and also between effective and ineffective uh, guidance. And on this front, authority-wide coding uh, of sorts, of course, is nothing new, but the types of standards and guidance that we've had thus far have not always produced great results. On the one hand, we have the ubiquitous highways uh, the standards that are effective at delivering on their objectives, namely highways dominated developments, but poor at delivering place quality. On the other hand, we have the equally ubiquitous generic design policies in local plans and almost as widespread residential design guides that are respectively so, so open to interpretation and, and so detailed that despite their focus on place quality, they are just as easily ignored as used. The impacts of these sorts of substandard codes that we've long had are plain to see in the poor and mediocre housing schemes that dominate across the country. So how will the new design codes be different from these? Well, the aspiration should be to combine the prescriptive non-negotiable qualities of highway standards with the statutory position, position in the local planning process of design policy and the place quality focus of those local design guides. And to strike this elusive balance, authority-wide design codes should focus foremost and with clarity and precision on the must have qualities of the desired new places, which should be expressed in an unequivocal manner as statements of expectation rather than negotiation. When this was the focus of the pilots, the monitoring and evaluation revealed that codes can be prepared surprisingly rapidly, albeit that most of the pilots were for sites rather than for whole local authority areas. Now local authority, uh, local planning authorities up and down the country will of course be grappling also with a third question, where to start. Um, but as the uh, monitoring and evaluation revealed, as all are in different places as regards their existing urban design governance tools and capabilities, each will be on a different journey towards an authority-wide design code. 
the best advice here is to start from where you are and what you have in place and to build from there. And, and that's because most authorities will already have a sense of what works and what doesn't in their local, local authorities, which aspects of design are being successfully implemented locally and which are not, and what form, what form their current suite of policies and guidance or rather what from their current uh, policies and guidance are proven effective at delivering design quality uh, and what uh, is not. And at the same time, if the ambition is to raise standards nationally, then this is only a stepping off point and not the end of the journey. Uh, we need to, to start by challenging, in a sense, what has gone before. And to do this, uh, we need to, uh, or rather it would be necessary, I think, to build a better understanding by going out and looking, experiencing and critiquing recent developments. Uh, a huge amount, of course, can be learned quickly and effectively through post-completion analysis, but too often it, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen or doesn't happen systematically. Meaningfully engaging local citizens in, in this process, both of looking, but also asking about what aspirations, or what, you know, what are their design aspirations in a manner that moves beyond simply, simplistic sort of likes and dislikes to aspirations for good places that will allow in each locality fulfilling, enriching and sustainable lives to be led and engaging with other critical parties early in these conversations, most notably highways authorities, and here persistence very well, you know, may be required, but also engaging with local developers and perhaps other neighboring authorities. Certainly while every authority will be unique, many share qualities and challenges in common, as well as a lack of resources, of course, and it may be that by working together, they can get a, a, a long way forward in preparing an authority-wide design code that can be shared in whole or in part, or simply in terms of the thinking process that feeds into its production. The monitoring and evaluation revealed a lot of excellent work in the first and second of these items on the screen, uh, although the third was uh, under uh, not really exploited given the confines. We only had a six-month testing period. The National Model Design Code method also raises another starting point, the identification of area types, which are areas of unified character. And their analysis is a basis for then developing more locally specific design coding is very much seen as a potential starting point. Now, while this is undoubtedly a valuable exercise and capable of producing more locally responsive design codes, uh, in particular in relation to factors such as landscape and architectural character, it's also complex and time consuming. So an alternative may be to begin by using the approaches that I've already outlined to identify the critical and generic what goes wrong factors um, and then differentiating or, or you know, and, and sort of if you like, nuancing these over time for different areas within those local authorities, rather than necessarily trying to produce codes for every particular uh, area type at the start. Certainly, if, if authority-wide codes are here to stay, then the first iteration will not be the last. And so it may be more important to get the fundamentals in place rapidly adding specificities at a later date. And this was an approach adopted by many of the authorities monitored during the first phase pilots. Um, uh, although the second round of pilots, I understand, will be looking at these issues of area types in more detail with the luxury of more time, I think, to, to explore, or explore those particular approaches, approaches and with more financial assistance, we do luck. Coming to my final question, if written well, by which I mean clear, focused, graphic and measurable, then authority-wide design codes would be the first port of call for designers and developers when they shape their schemes, for development managers, councillors uh, and uh, inspectors when they evaluate them, and for communities when they seek to understand propositions in their, local, uh, uh, in their localities. And to do this, they will need to be intuitive to use, attractive and engaging, and no longer than they absolutely need to be. And over time, 
uh, we'll be able to gauge how effective these new forms of code are. As already argued, they will need to be quite different from the sorts of authority-wide policy and guidance and standards that we've seen before. And authorities should certainly not underestimate that this is not or should not be an exercise in repackaging standards and policy that already exists. Monitoring and evaluation suggested in recognizing and helping to tackle authority-wide design problems, authority-wide codes will be of value in, in, in the absence of the capacity to take a site-specific approach, but also um, they will help, they potentially can help to coordinate area-based and site-specific codes over time. And to my mind, the real prize remains those site-specific design codes. These have proved particularly effective at delivering design quality in the past, and largely because their preparation requires a careful site-specific design process. And this uh, typically will involve an urban designer or architect directly engaging with the place rather than a plan smith simply applying generic housing products and generic codes to a site for as little as 10 to 35 pounds per plot to prepare, for example, a bid layout, um, often prepared without visiting the site or conducting any analysis. The explanatory notes to the, to the new bill confirm that authority-wide codes can act as a framework for which subsequent detailed design codes can come forward prepared for specific areas or sites. And this should be made explicit by authorities when drafting their own authority-wide design code by including a simple requirement that, that a site-specific design code be prepared for every major housing application, building on and delivering the provisions in the authority-wide code. To conclude, the making, I think, of authority-wide design codes mandatory is a bold and welcome move but as with so much in our planning systems, uh, how that is interpreted locally by different authorities is likely to vary very widely. Uh, and that of course is local democracy and is a good thing, but it would also be reflective of the local resources and the confidence to do this sort of work uh, that is in place locally. As the monitoring and evaluation report concluded, it's difficult to underestimate the vehemence with, with which the pilot teams drove home the message that to move beyond the usual processes of waiting until develop, developers are in place and then being led by them requires that authorities have access to design skills and capacity. Clearly, uh, we will not get full coverage of design codes quickly, and it may take many years. Um, but if written well and then kept under review and then refined as evidence of implementation begins to mount, we could be moving into a new and much more effective era in the long but rather rocky history of urban, urban design governance in England. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, Matthew.